touch our realities touch our realities touch our realities in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus precious name we worship amen and people shout a big amen Revelation chapter 1. Sit down. Sit in the spirit. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 1, I read from, chapter, I read from verses 9 to 10. Or to 11. Mm. Or to 12, even. <laughs> Let's see. It says, I John also, I John, who also I am your brother and companion in tribulation, in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was an eye, eye that is called Patmos, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit in the Lord's day hmm, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. I think I will not I'll stop here. Because I was in the spirit in the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Hmm. I pray that in course of these three days we shall be in the spirit. We shall be in the spirit. Swim in the spirit. Because it was only when it was, you see, when it was thrown to Allah of Patmos, that place was a place of, once we are thrown there, you're a dead man. There's no other way out. You cannot come, out, cannot come back in your life. You are dead. Allah of Patmos is a place of the dead men, dead people. It's a forgotten place. So, the midst of deadness, the midst of deadness, the midst of uh, you know, bad situation, he was able to still be in the spirit. So, the situation of, uh, you know, uh, uh, this happened, that happened, this one happened, I was in Patmos, I was in this, I was in that, I could not be in the spirit. <laughs> that's, not, that's nothing like that. Amen. <laughs> you can be in the spirit in any circumstance. He was, remember, he was thrown, he churches has, has it that he was thrown in frying oil. He sat down in frying oil in the spirit too. <laughs> he was brought out, cast into the island of Patmos. He was in the spirit. So it's not, it's not your situation that makes you not to be in the spirit. You chose not to be in the spirit. And how does he even know the lost day? How does he even know? Because it was a man who knew that there was a lost day, so he had to be in the spirit. How does he know his lost day? Anyway, I don't want to deal with that for now. But he was a lost, lost day, he was in the spirit, and he heard. Why most of us don't hear? Because we are not in the spirit. No, we don't hear. We, our situation, our circumstances, Characterizes our block our ear, block everywhere. We can't even see, we can't hear. They ask us question, why are you not hearing? Because my I was now at Patmos. What is your reason why you're not in the spirit? I was in the Patmos. Why are you not doing this? I was this. So whatever you find yourself in, it's not it's, it's not a it's not a reason why you should not be in the spirit. It's not a reason why you should not hear. Hallelujah. May God give us a listening here. May God cause to be cause us to be in the spirit. In spite of our situation and circumstances, in the mighty name of Jesus. And this fasting period and that time of to be in the spirit. This is the last day. Hallelujah. So there's no way we can be in these three days without hearing something. You must hear something. God must speak to you. Oh, my daughter. Hallelujah. Oh, God, speak to me. God, speak to me. In the name of Jesus. Speak to me, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me. In the name of Jesus. Bible says, Heard a voice behind me, great voice as of a trumpet. Behind him, behind. He was busy focusing, worshiping, worshiping the spirit. All of a sudden, a voice came from behind. From behind. So, in other words, there was, there's no excuse whatsoever you should not hear God. Even if you don't know how to hear God, but it comes from behind. You should see here. Once when the spirit you hear it, you hear it. It came from behind, though, not from the front. He was focusing, worshiping God. A voice came from behind and he heard it. So this excuse of I can't I can't feel God, I can't hear God. I don't know what God is saying, telling me it's not an excuse at all. A man was focusing, praising God, worshiping him. 
in the spirit with the Lord and he heard the voice behind. Praise God. So there's no situation you can be in that will make you not to hear. When I mean hear does not literally mean you hear a voice loud. Not necessarily that. Not that was be able to know God's direction. Be able to know what God is saying part time. Be, be able to understand your seasons. That is my season. He knew his season has come to hear. And he heard. And like a voice of a trumpet. I pray that God's voice shall be so loud in your life. Shall be so clear, so glaring, so clear. It's like a trumpet. Then I am a Jesus. That you will never miss it. You never miss it. You will not miss it. I say, you will not miss it. 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 It is so loud like a trumpet. Amen. <laughs> you know, some people tell you, I don't know what God spoke. No, because it wasn't loud like a trumpet. If God's voice was so loud like a trumpet, you hear him anyhow. In other words, if God, if you have opened up your antenna, your antenna is open, your, your heart is open to God. When he speaks, it's as though a trumpet is sounding. As I told you before, he's not necessarily hearing God very loud like somebody talking. No. That in his spirit, in your spirit, man, it's as though a trumpet is blowing. It's so loud. In your spirit. And only you can hear it. All the animals, all the dead people around you didn't hear. Only him heard. In the midst of dead people. In the midst of dead people, dead situation, dead circumstances. Only him heard. Like a trumpet. <laughs> you see, this thing is, is real. This thing is, I'm telling you, it's real. It's, it's not a fake thing. That you alone in your, in your, in the midst of deadness, in the midst of bad situation, you know, unforeseen circumstances, that you alone in the midst of dead people, you can hear. And when you hear it, it will deem you to be like a trumpet. Others are not hearing. In you, it sounded too loud. It sounded too loud. And people ask you question. Why you do this thing? Why are you worshiping? Why are you praising God? Why are you come to fellowship? Why are you fasting? Tell them is the voice is like a trumpet. I cannot sleep. <laughs> they ask you a question. Why are you not sleeping? It's like a trumpet. I cannot sleep. They ask you a question, but we can't hear any trumpet now. You alone within you is like a trumpet. You can't sleep. I'm not making sense. You can't even sleep. You want to stop fasting? You can't stop. You want to stop praying? You can't stop. You want to start controversial? You want to stop? You can't stop. Because the voice like a trumpet. So loud. <laughs> you see, people that don't, uh, people that give excuses are those who don't have, who don't hear God like, like the sound of a trumpet. It's not loud enough. I'm not complicated. So they give excuses. Because if God's voice is so loud inside you, in fact, any day, any day he has to do something, you'll be start, you start crying. Because it's too loud. You can't even sleep. Huh. Others are born in a mountain while I'm here eating and drinking. Who do me this? You know, <laughs> you'll be, it will be, be, be happening to your spirit. Who do me this? What else are praying and fasting? I'm here eating and drinking. Who do me this? It's all loud inside you. <laughs> I'm not making sense. What else are in fellowship? I'm here sleeping, looking for a uh, television to, to flip. Who do me this? You need to be disturbing you. It will be so loud inside you. Your wife might be there, children might be there, but only you is you are, you are you are dealing with it inside your heart, like a force of a trumpet, so loud. Am I making sense? You see, as I said before, you are giving excuses because it's not loud enough. <laughs> Am I making sense? It is not what loud enough. Oh, I hear God. No, mm. when it's loud enough, we know that you have, you have arrived. If it's loud enough, it will be like a trumpet. And you can't bet, feel something's going on. You feel it. You know it, that you know it. So, if you are a tiger, so, you are so, <laughs> outside you is dead, inside you is dead, you are in trouble. Oh? <laughs> if outside you is dead, and inside you is alive, thank your God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go and thank your God because you are good. That was it. Outside John was Patmos, dead things, dead people, dead animals, a jungle. But right where he was, in his own cru crucible, that's very small place, he could hear, he could hear, he could hear. I'm not making sense. Yes, sir. <laughs> he could hear. Animals in here, those who are, those who are dead already, the only thing around him was dead. But to him, what made him alive was what was inside. Like a trumpet. Voice of a trumpet. Voice of a trumpet. He could not hold it. <laughs> hey! I'm not from Omega, the first and the last. He may decide hearing. 
I found him again. First and last. He started hearing instantly, like a voice of a trumpet. You alone, no, him alone, no, not nobody else, him alone. What shows you are life in the spirit is that you are able to decipher, you are able to hear him on the inside, talking to you, speaking to you. Listen, I'm not saying hearing God means that you must hear a loud voice. So, I mean, you could feel a nudging. You could feel some troubling on the inside that, that you're not doing what you're supposed to do. It's so loud. You're so troubled that you're supposed to be faster. You're fasting. Supposed to be praying. You're not praying. Supposed to go to fellowship. You're not in fellowship. Supposed to do, go to church. You're not going to church. Supposed to do what you're supposed to do. You're not, you're not doing And if you are teased, see, people, people know what they're supposed to do. They don't do it, but they feel at ease. They feel normal. You're dead inside, though. That's a, that's a sign of deadness. You should be troubled that I'm supposed to win this, I'm not doing it. And you're normal. I mean, you're normal. You're laughing, smiling. That means inside you, you are dead. I'm making sense. If, if there's a, if there's a pop, very proper reason why you're not doing what you're supposed to do for God, fine. I mean, things do happen. But whereby, there's nothing that could say that could be a good excuse for you. And then you cannot, you are not pricked, you are not troubled, you just you are just normal. <laughs> when others are on the mountain burning, praying, and you are supposed to be in their midst, then you are normal. Ah, you are not normal, though. <laughs> well, check yourself. Better go for a spiritual checkup. You are not normal. You need to see a doctor, spiritual doctor. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are so, so be, supposed to be crying, oh God, I'm supposed to be somewhere. Praise with my people. Worship with my people. Pray with my people. Fast with my people. Look at me here. I'm on the bed. Look at me here. Watch, cross my leg. I'm watching YouTube. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to be crying. You're not crying. When they ask you, say, because of this, you're not normal, Lord. Praise the Lord. They have voice supposed to be loud inside you. Telling you, no, 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 my daughter. No, no, my sister. My, my, my son, sorry. You are supposed to be somewhere by now. You are supposed to be fasting by now. You are supposed to be praying by now. You are supposed to be doing something by now. What are you doing on the bed? And you are doing the bed. We flip to gear one and gear two. <laughs> you are normal, though. Inside you, you are dead. Inside you. Because there are something called dead conscience. You know, there are some people that conscience near with hot iron. That no matter what they do or what they do, they don't feel it. They're not pricked. They're not disturbed. They don't feel it. They don't feel that it, 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 to them it's normal. What do they do? They don't do. If I ask them question, must I must I control by is it by force? Must I pray by force? Must I fast by force? He said that you're not normal. <laughs> you're not normal, though. And then when time comes for God to dish out blessing to those who have spent their time, spend their treasures, spend their talent to serve God, and your hands are open. Oh God bless me too. God will tell you, put your hand in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God bless me. Put that in your pocket. <laughs> praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. I don't know why I'm talking to you. I'm saying this. Maybe he's blessing somebody. You see, you see, prayer is prayer. Prayer is prayer. Okay? Um, fasting is fasting. Fellowship coming is fellowship. But listen to this. It becomes a sacrifice when you go extra mile. Everybody, everybody prays. Nobody will tell him doesn't pray, except those who are who, are, who don't believe in Jesus, or whatever. So they even pray in their own way. <laughs> the tradition is they pray. So everybody pray. Everybody pray. Everybody prays. Even those who are so necessary men say they pray. Maybe in their hearts. But they pray. Everybody prays. Family pray. Children pray. But prayer becomes a sacrifice or sacrificial when you do it when things are not normal. When things when you're not supposed to do it, pray you're praying. When it's painful, most painful you are praying. Because sacrificial. When people, people give, for example, somebody say millionaire is giving, he's giving a $1,000 of his millionaire, millionaire. That is giving. It's okay. Giving is giving. He has his own reward. But your giving becomes sacrificial if you not begin to give like, how come you not begin to give like 500000 How much makes sense? 200000 Because you're giving 1000 it's like, uh, uh, oh, Donate, donate, are you getting 1,000? You have, you have 1 million, you have donate 1,000. If I give you 5,000, it doesn't shake you. It's nothing. But when it will shake you, me to give like 200,000, 200,000, 400,000, 500,000, you feel it. That is sacrificial giving. All your time. Spend your time in God's presence. Everybody spends time. Everybody go to choir practice. 
and maybe on Thursday or Friday go. But when you come sacrificial, you spend your time in serving God, practicing whatever you are doing to serve. When you're not being to spend extra time, become sacrificial. In everything, ministry too. Those who are called the ministry. You preach normal, you whatever, whatever. But we need to spend more time in preaching God's word, winning souls, evangelism. You are not sacrificing. That's sacrifice. And these are things that God look at sacrificial times. Am I making sense? Sacrificial times. It's not the name of we do. What shall I render? What shall I render? Look at your pocket. I'm looking for one. one. You have a pack of money that is like 20 naira, 20 dollar, I'm sorry, 20 dollar, 50 dollar around you. You know, praise the Lord. And you look for a one, one dollar. Uh, I, I don't want to keep saying naira. <laughs> you look for one dollar inside a bunch of 20 naira, 20 dollar. What am I saying naira, for God's sake? <laughs> a bunch, you're not looking for a one one dollar in means a bunch of twenty twenty dollars and fifty fifty dollars. What shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render to you, my God? Upon the miracle you have done for me. <laughs> He's searching for one dollar in the midst of twenty or fifty dollars. Why not take the twenty and dump it? Amen. One that I caught myself doing it one day. What shall I render? Ah! I said, stop! I packed it. I took the twenty dollars. I said, no. <laughs> I didn't have to do If I had to, I put it that day. You I was convicted. I have $20. In the midst of, I just touched with that. I said, I dump it. Hallelujah. So I was so, I said, ah, you give me $1. In the midst of $20. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Anything you do out of normal is sacrificial. And that is what attracts God's voice. Go and read the Bible now. You see, our days is all full of, we're just joking. Amen. We're playing, you know. Plain. Look at the religious of men in the Bible. How they serve God. We are here playing. Praise God. You serve God when you like, when you don't like, when it's convenient, when it's not convenient. You don't care. It doesn't prick you. You don't feel it even normal. It doesn't make any difference. You are dead though. <laughs> you are, when I mean dead, I mean dead physically. I mean dead inside. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But as I said, if you have a cogent reason not, not to come, not to pray, not to fast, not to do anything whatsoever, God understands. Like we have our aged mothers who are aged. They have, they have done their, they have done a lot of fasting when they were growing up. <laughs> In the time we come back, I will not fast like this again. I hope you know that. I will not fast like this again. The time we come. When I become papa, papa, you know what I mean? <laughs> when I become old, I just see that they're blessing people. <laughs> Hallelujah! You think I'll fast like this forever? Ah, the time we come when I'm really old. Old, old, old age. I will very, ah, my eyes not, you know, my strength not abated. People will be shouting and praying. Come on, come on. I just sit and say, oh, my children. <laughs> because I've done my part when I was young. <laughs> you vibrant like a youth. But if you waste your youth, when you're old, what will you do? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Some people don't fast when they're young. When they're old, that's when they start fasting. Ah, where is the trend? I'm not complicated. You wasted your youth. Then the man, it doesn't matter. Uh, God understands. Uh, I'm this, I'm that. Uh, you, yeah, you're wasting your, you are wasting your youthfulness. So when you become old, what do you do? You become a, like a dry as a dry wood. <laughs> because let me tell you, sick people don't know. It's when you are old, you need to reap your youthful age in prayer. Some of the things that youth will pray for seven hours, ten days, twenty years to get a result. An old man who has been in spirit for many years, fasting and prayer, is his time of reward. He pray for one minute and he's done. You don't know? All this we are doing is ordinary. It's not ordinary. We are, we are, we are saving glories. I'm not, we are saving glories. We are saving it. I'm not going to say this. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm trying to say. You are saving glories. Like a, like a, our prayer, a, prayer, a prayer put in a bottle. You are saving it. By the time you reach your old age, when you cannot do so much in fasting and prayer, maybe fast for, maybe, two, maybe you know, 6 to 12 or 6 to 3. Because you are really old. You, you have a lot of white everywhere. But you are still vibrating in God. Am I communicating? You have saved the glory to that point. That time, I just pray for one minute and things happen. I say, ah, what did happen? That's it, that, Baba. You just pray that something happened. Oh, God! Look at Baba. Help me, help me. <laughs> Baba has been praying for many years. He's not receiving his reward. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, if you waste your youthful age now, I'm telling you, 
when you're old, you'll be regretting it too. I, I heard one, saw one man one day who, when I came to know Jesus, knew, and I mean, in, to the charismatic newly, many years in um, Nigeria, I, I saw them clapping their hands, and I saw who I just went I joined the charismatic by then, many years ago. And I saw one man doing Bible study. He was crying. Ah, I said, but Baba, are you crying? He said, because my children, I didn't know God is sweet like this. <laughs> he was in his 80s or thereabout. I didn't know that God is sweet like this. So, what was, what, what was that when I was small? Amen? Praise the Lord. <laughs> man was very old. They was not going to mountain and jungle like the youth. No, you may able to do that. So, he was crying. So, I died known. May not be a portion in Jesus' name. That when you are old, you are saying, I died known. No. That's when somebody to be enjoying glories. Just prayer, something just happened. Just minutes. In fact, you'll be rocking your chair like this, what you're enjoying. Or be drinking tea. Go, it is done. That's it. It is done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But now you can pray for Tell Awas, you're still trusting God. <laughs> you're still trusting God. We're going to do it. But you're not man who has been in the Lord for years upon years, fasting and praying. He just blesses you. And it's done. A man come get you. Please save your glories. You're going to see some glory right now, but God is going to save some other glory for you during old age. Hallelujah. May God help us in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I want to let us know by the grace of God that this three day will not be like any other. It's not as usual. Something special will happen to you. I declare 72 hours miracles for you. Or not before the end of Wednesday. That which you are trusting God for, believe God for. Receive it now. Receive it! Jesus mighty name. Zubi to hear God's voice like a voice of a trumpet. So loud, so loud, so loud, so loud, so loud. Jesus, mighty name. Take that grace to hear God's voice. In fact, he said, behind me, I heard a great voice. And friend, he said, great voice? Somebody would say, where, where is the great voice? When you say somebody, you have a great voice, means it came like a thunder, right? Everybody heard it. It's a great voice. I'm perceiving that people say, ah, oh God, John, what do you mean? be great voice. We didn't hear anything, no. <laughs> but he himself heard it. A great voice. That's why people that don't do what they also do, they're supposed to do. They, their heart will be pricking them. They will hear some, 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 like a voice of a trumpet. They cannot, they'll be tossing on the bed. Maybe they're sleeping, be tossing on the bed. Oh God, I'm supposed to be in the fellowship by now. I'm supposed to be praying by now. I'm not praying. Be, they'll be tossing. Because it's like a great, great voice of God, like a trumpet. Am I making sense? May God make our heart to be alive. Our spirit man alive. To hear him so clear and so loud. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Our topic for three days. Um, possibly three days or I can break it up. I don't know. God will help me. Is assessing your seasons. Assessing your seasons. That's the topic for these three days. Um, God will help me. I will see I can break it up. I don't, you know, so I don't want to make it part one, part two, part three. Let's see how God help us. Amen. So, I know we have spoken um, a few times about seasons. Season. And um, what do I really hope to achieve with this topic? What I hope to achieve is, is that What I hope to achieve is that Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How to achieve something um, with these three days that we can obtain, we can have, we can obtain a season. We can obtain or go into our season. We can do that. We can go into our seasons. We can assess it. We can obtain it. We can get an entry to our seasons. And Sometimes, not necessarily fully protocols. Not necessarily fully protocols. That God can break protocols for our sake. Praise God. You see, I, I know about the men of Issachar who understood two seasons. So understanding is one of the ways to assess your seasons. When a man has understanding, he's able to gain access to his season. Go have understanding. For example, you know that the rain must surely fall in the season of rain. So what do you do? You begin to prepare yourself for the rainy season. So while others are suffering other rain, 
you have everything you need. You have your umbrella, you have your coverage, you have a house already built to stay under. So you are enjoying, even though rain is beating others, you are able to assess your season because you are understanding that a season called rainy season is coming. So you prepare ahead of time. That means you have understanding that rainy season is coming at so time, so you prepare. So preparedness with understanding can cause you to assess your seasons properly. Hallelujah. Because you are expecting it. Expectations with understanding, with preparedness, you can enjoy your seasons powerfully. You know that summer is coming. And you understand that summer usually comes at some time of the year. What do you do? You begin to prepare for summer. Because you have understanding that with the, with, the, with the previous years, you have seen that summer comes at some time. And you have seen it consistently for 12 years, 20 years, it's been like that. In fact, it's been written in the calendar that this is the time that summer comes. So you prepare yourself with all you need so that the sun will not deal with you. You don't come out of sun looking darker than we're supposed to. Prepare everything, your cream, everything. I'm just giving an example, physical, physical example. You know, you prepare to be on that air condition. Driving under air condition, being in house in air condition, so that you somehow will not deal with you too much. <laughs> so when others are suffering, becoming darker and darker, just an example, I'm not saying if you are dark, you're not your season. I'm just giving an example. So I'm dark myself too. So <laughs> I'm not talking anybody per se. So, so I'm just giving an example. So, so you don't come out of it looking more darker. You're already prepared. So while others are suffering that, that summer, you're enjoying because you're prepared. Why are you prepared? Because I'm understanding. So many of these like I had understanding what they should do. And they did it and then it worked for them. They were the one that led the Israelites because of understanding. And they ought to let you know that everything God built is built on times and seasons. We are seeing very clearly in Genesis that God built times and seasons in the celestial, in the moon and star. That, 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 that these are things that determines times and seasons. We, we studied already in the past. The moon and stars and celestial beings Determine times and seasons of people that when certain things move this way, rain falls. When there's enough vapor in the sky and it pours, rain falls. When this sun moves this way, this is dark season. When this sun moves this way, it's a light, it's a light, it's a, it's a daytime. Uh, so not the sun, the, the earth, according to science. When earth revolves around this, it is dark. When it goes this way, it is a day. You see, these are seasons already prepared by God, and then times and seasons are modulated by by reason of the celestial bodies and the atmosphere that God has built around it. Am I coming at him? So God has made times and seasons, you know, according to how he wants it. And these times and seasons regulate things. Apart from celestial regulation of times and seasons, those who have understanding of those times, they work with it. Secondly, there are spiritual called spiritual seasons. In Israel, like those days, they have what they call watch hours. That the fourth, first watch, second watch, third watch, fourth watch, are the seasons to pray. The seasons to do make to, to make sacrifices. They know the seasons of the, during, the, during the watch hours. A watchman knows when he's supposed to be on the watch time. When they divide themselves into times, into divide, watchmen divide themselves into into places. Okay, you watch the time. So each of them know their seasons. We have to watch. You don't miss it because if you miss a season. That would be a problem. That was, the, that was the secret that Elijah used. Elijah allowed the men of Bar who, did not, who have lost count of spiritual seasons, who don't know the time of evening sacrifice, morning sacrifice, afternoon sacrifice, they've lost count because they followed Bar. They didn't know. The time came when they messed up their seasons, they didn't understand what to do at the seasons, they were doing their Bar. No, Bar and Sours, Bar and Sours, busy making noise and shouting everywhere, cutting themselves. Elijah was watching them. But at the evening sacrifice, Elijah knew that a spiritual season has arrived. At the evening sacrifice. What did, what did he do? He knew that people have broken others. They've broken their times and seasons. They've broken everything. No, no, but they've been forgotten that that was what they call evening sacrifice. And it, the, the fourth hour, the third hour watch, the first hour watch. Everything they've forgotten because they served bar. Everything God told them, they forgotten. They didn't know the difference between ordinary season and um, ordinary season and then proper, you know, proper season and special seasons. But Elijah knew. And Elijah capitalized on that season to show them pepper. 
Am I making sense? It, 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 apart from the natural signs and the natural times and seasons that God has created, that's what we call spiritual seasons. Amen. The hour of prayer, hour of watch time. When, 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 when mercenaries or what I call mercenaries or the watched people should be on the tower, should be on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the wall, watching, making sure nobody breaks through the gate. There are seasons. Elijah knew the season of evening sacrifice and he cashed on it. And he told them, he said, make, he said begin to put the, bring, bring 12 stones, bring wood. What was it? He was repairing the altar broken. But this season, less people who have followed back God of Bar, prophet of Bar, 850 people, the prophet held long on Bar. Jezebel has turned their heart from God's season, from prayer season, from season, from the watch time that God has given them. Jezebel turned their heart away. But the one man understood the times and the seasons, the evening sacrifice. He was waiting from morning till evening. They didn't know why he was waiting. He was watching, waiting for the season to come. Even in sacrifice. At that time, he began to repair the others. He brought 12, 12 stones, put them together, put the wood. What was he doing? He was repairing broken altars of our father. Because it was a timely time, it was a timely season, he said, pour water. <laughs> pour water. Let's see whose God will lick this water. Let's see. The one that lick it is a God. Ah, at the evening sacrifice at the right season so this man knew how to assess his season, knew how to assess his season, he knew that at this watch time at this evening sacrifice, if I do this is a repair the altar he knew that by repair the altar broken by these people, he's able to bring down God friends, you need to know your season and assess it properly Elijah knew his season he assessed it he gained entrance he did the right thing. And fire fell. <laughs> I decree. In this period of three days, very fast, I pray your season has come. I say your season has come. 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 Receive it now. Receive it now. We serve the true living God. Oh, the same yesterday. The same today. The same forevermore. If God has done it for many, like Elijah, that knew his season and assessed it properly and fire fair I declare your fire will fall your fire will fall this season I see fire falling I see fire falling I see your prayers answered receive it now receive it now receive it now in the name of Jesus ladies and gentlemen when you assess your season properly your prayers are answered when your seasons are properly assessed, your prayers are answered. Quickly. It is possible that a season of even sacrifice was a good time for Elijah to do what he did. But if he had not pre prepared the broken altars, he couldn't have assessed it. A man could make it. But understanding is very powerful. So, so number one point of assessing your, 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 your season is understanding of your times and seasons. Elijah did understand his times and he knew it was an evening sacrifice. When God would come down in a special way to touch his people. He didn't just stop there. He knew that he had to repair the broken waters. That if he, if he caught a fire without repairing the broken water, it was possible that fire wouldn't have come. Assessing your season. Knowing what to do. The same way, these three days is our is a season. I told you before, I preached before, that you can create a season. You will see that things are not working well for you, so God. You lock yourself in door, so God. I assess my season. I create my season. You can create your own season. When things are not working well, say, God, I create my I will show you something very quickly that, I can, that you can create your season. You can, you can have understanding of a, a set time cost seasons. Like Elijah did. He knew that at evening sacrifice, something special happened and he assessed it. You can also decide to create one. <laughs> May 
may God give you grace to understand your season. 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 That you are assess it. That you will assess it. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> I have a, a pregnant woman knows very clearly that the nine months she's due to for delivery. She knows so be to count that her time and seasons are coming. She goes to calendar and put okay on the twelfth of September. That's when I'm supposed to put to bed because it will be the nine months the twelfth of December. That's your season. Are you going to prepare yourself? Buy some baby things, get your box and everything ready. You see, for the first month of in, of conception, you began to buy some things. You are praying to all season. Some people are, are very insensitive to seasons. When they know the season is about to come, they don't prepare. They 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 do wishy washy things and walk around in black like desically. No prayer, nothing happening. How will you get your season? You know we are doing through that fast. What have you done? What's your preparedness to assess the season? Because in time we are, let me tell you something. Let me, in case you don't know. Every month we do three day dry fast is your season. The fellowship created as a season for the whole band of the fellowship. But not everyone can assess it. Am I making sense? Not everyone can assess three day dry fast as a season. <laughs> oh, you see, people don't understand the scriptures. That's why we have a problem. That when a fellowship decide to create something for a, a for, for for the purpose of encounters or the membership, that will say, Oh God, we are creating this time to fast and pray, wait on you, so our members can encounter you in heaven or on earth, the, in, the, among the angels. This is a season for Holy Ghost Fellowship. It's a season. It's a monthly season. Among the Christians. And then some people are not taking it serious. So some lack understanding, some lack preparedness. So when the season comes, it comes and goes, and it passes away, just like that. Unassessed. Am I cases? People, this is unassessed. So through the dry fast can just come and go. Even if you are not fasting, dry fasting, but you are assessing it. Oh God, three three days, it won't pass me by. It won't pass me by. These are three days my brethren have put together in the name of the Lord Jesus. You made the leader, made this leader over me, and decided to tell me to tell us that we should do three days fast. For it's my time of season. I begin to assess it. I begin to, to, to obtain it. I begin to gain entrance into it. Oh God, you see, this are this is what called men of understanding. I'm not making sense. <laughs> it's one thing for God to create times as in naturally. It's that thing for what God's spiritual watch time as a season. It's that thing for people to create seasons. I believe, it, believe me, when you create a season to encounter God, that and God in heaven and the angels are aware they will be there. <laughs> you don't know? Even if it's your personal fasting time, your personal one, oh God, I want to fast for six to six. Or whatever, whatever, on your own time. You have just created your own season. So, but the problem is how do you assess it? You create a season, are you able to assess it and obtain something tangible? And allow God to touch your life. You just use, make make caricature of it and make a mess of it. That's how some put three, 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 three day drive fast. It just comes and goes. No special attention, no special waiting on the Lord. No, no reflection in scriptures. No prayer. Nothing. They just wishy washy, just taking out. That's why seasons come and go. Seasons come and go. Seasons come and go. But men or certain men are the ones that take advantage of such seasons. And these are people who say, Who has believed in my report to whom the arm of the Lord be revealed? These are people that have revelation of God's arm. These are people that gain solution because they didn't just leave the season to go by. Ah, may your season not go by. May your season not pass you by. May your season not pass you by. May your season not pass you by. May your season not just pass you by. In the name of Jesus, I release grace upon you to assess your season, to work in your season, to benefit from your season. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. In the name of Jesus, Shut my season will not pass me by. Season will just come and go like that, and you are looking. Understanding. 
Understanding is one of the ways to assess your season. Understanding, understanding, understanding. Elijah had understanding. And that was the edge he had over other people. Understanding. He knew what to do. <laughs> what is understanding? What is to know what to do? I mean, two is to know what to do. The one understanding, two, know what to do. Elijah knew the only way to, to make this understanding work is to repair the broken orders. And by so doing, he brought God down. <laughs> God had been missing for several, for three and a half years. He said, This thing will not happen except by my word. I might come and get it. <laughs> and Elijah was a man, a, a man of like passion. The same thing, we, he felt what we, what we feel. He ate and drank as we did and drank, as we did and drank. He, he had fear, as he called for fear sometimes. But yet, his understanding about times and seasons. Of the evening sacrifice and what to do gave him an edge over others. He lived like a superstar because of what understanding and knew what to do. Like a superstar. Elijah was a man like us, the Bible said it. So, what made him special? Understanding and knowing what to do. Feeling what God feels, passion of God. Passion, passion. Another way to assess the, your sin is passion, passion. One is understanding. Two is knowing what to do. Three is passion, passion. A man that has passion for things of God does not just, his season not just passing pass by. His season do not just pass him by. Passion, passion for things of God. Passion, passion. It was jealousy of God that, that made him and passion for God that made him go to the palace and say, you man, you have you, you, are, you have dealt with Israel too much. Enough is enough. There shall be no rain except by my word. It is all, it is what God says, so he said by my word. I got I got By my word. And what has what are his resume? Nothing. Elijah the teach bite. <laughs> That's all. Elijah the teach bite. I, I, I saw what? Which university you attend? Which school did you go? What is your pedigree? Who is your father? Who is your mother? How many classes? How many degrees do you have? Are you a professor? <laughs> you know, these are Man, no resume. Elijah, the teach back. <laughs> he appeared in the palace. There shall be no rain three and a half years. And that was it. Disappeared. That was it. So this is matter of it's not a matter of resume. It's a matter of how much you have read, books you have read. <laughs> Am I communicating? It's not how much you know. It's not how much you, you, you know you can. It's, it's what you know. Understand it. Of your seasons. Passion for the kingdom. Passion. He did not even care if you are going to palace and Jezebel eating raw. Passion, 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 passion drives you so hard, drives you anywhere. Passion for the work of the master. A man come get him. I said three things, right? Understanding, knew what to do, and passion for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> number three, number four, sorry, is to speak the right things. Speaking the right things. Some people kill their seasons. They kill it. <laughs> Friends, at the time that Elijah was about to start do something tangible, it looks as if hell became open more. Towards the time when there was going to be a fight, a battle on Mount Carmel, and God told him to appear. He appeared. Obadiah said, Master, Allah is looking for you. They are looking to kill you. He said, go and tell him. Your master is the trouble of his, not me. The trouble of Israel. He said, meet me at Mokamel. They were looking for him by any way to kill him and maim his life. But with all this trouble around him, Elijah never said anything negative. Elijah never said anything negative. Never said anything, oh God, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> no. He's too strong. He was firm. He said, tell him to meet me at Mokamel. A man of valor. Yet a man of lack of passion, but he knew what to say. When he came to his own time to display God, he said the right things. When things were not working around him, he said the right things. Speaking, people kill their seasons by saying the wrong things. 
You know what the devil does? The devil, when the devil notices that you are about to enter your season, there are, there are pain around you, miseries and woes, things around you that make you think there's no more God. Friends, one of the indications you should watch out for when your season is about to arrive is, is to see, it will see what you call pain. That was some pain. I mean, pain doesn't honestly mean body pain. I mean, things around you not working well. Pain, miseries. When you, buy, you touch this, it's not working. Do this, it's not working. You pray and pray, it's not working. It, it's as though, though there's no more God. When you feel there's no more God, it's a stronger indication that God is coming. <laughs> oh my God. Anytime you feel your life, oh God, you can see if you're not around. I pray that I pray about this, it's not working. My, my, my people are cajoling me. People are telling me, what kind of God are you serving? People are telling me, you are fasting and fasting, we don't see any food. People are telling me, you are carrying Bible and of flesh. No difference between you and them. People are telling you things. It is around you, sin not working well. Just watch it. Your season is about to arrive. Therefore, you must start speaking the right things. If you follow your circumstances at that time, oh, devil is too wicked. Devil is too wicked. He knows very well by calculation that this is the time that your time is about to arrive. So he makes you to talk nonsense. He will influence associations. That's why this time, keep away from associations. They will, take, they will make you say bad things. They look at you. You say, yes, I'm going to look at you. What's the difference between you and me? You go to church, I, go to church. I, don't, go to, I don't go to church. Tell me the difference. You go to church every day. You fast and pray. What, 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 okay, look at me. You, what's the difference? Possibly he has built mansions, live in a very big home. But he's telling you that. And you, because you don't know your season, you say, my God will prove himself. <laughs> my God, you prove, prove yourself that you are God. Prove yourself. God has already proved himself a long time ago. <laughs> he will not prove it again because of you. He has proved himself a long time ago. Some of you listen to my preaching on um, um, uh, uh, this in one of, on Fridays. I, my ten, my, I, what I'm doing was intentional to tell people that God, anything God needs to be done is already done. It's resting. You don't know that. God is resting. He's resting. He has already sent his word out to do what he wants to do. He has prepared seasons and times for people to enter in. He has also given you some leeway to create your seasons. And then you're like saying, oh God, where are you? Prove yourself. You already proved it. He's resting now. I'm not going to get him. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the matter. God seems to bring some people's affairs, but God is resting. That's the truth. He's resting. You know why? He has done all he to do. What does he want to do? To come again and die again? Second time? Is that what he want? <laughs> he gave his son. God said, for he loves the world, and he gave his son. What does he want to do? You, people kill him. Hallelujah. <laughs> he killed me, died, they went to heaven. He want to come and die again. That's the final thing God could do. The last and final. So everything man needs is available. You just walk into it. Number one, there could be times I think God has set already for you to enter. If you understand, help understand, you can enter easily. And knowing what to do, you can assess your seasons. Am I going to Number two, even if you don't see or don't understand, you can create your own. <laughs> I'm not making sense. And so, God, I've not felt any season for this year. I've not felt anything special. No special money, no special favor anywhere since January to now. From uh, uh, Abba. If from January to now, no special thing, no favor, no open door, everything looks dry. Ah! And you're watching. <laughs> you're watching. Under your nose, nothing special. Nothing like favor or something happening. No, pop somebody just even people people just greeting you. Right? Something special around you. Nothing for January date. And you're watching. It's possible that you missed your season. Very possible. You missed it because of lack of understanding. But if you don't miss it, you can catch in. You can catch up. You can catch up. You can catch up by creating your own. Also, God, I miss my season, but I can catch up. Let me show you. Let me show you a mystery. I will close with that. Hiya, mama. Oh my God, it's nine forty-two. Maybe I should leave it tomorrow. <laughs> I don't want to resign. Nine forty-two. Nine forty-two. <laughs> it's that time fast. That time good. So you can create your own. I will leave it tomorrow. Maybe I will do part two tomorrow. Let me do part one, part two. So we'll just stay on the same. Um, listen, to so do part two tomorrow. So you can create your own. I will show you a message tomorrow. That 
when when you when you don't have understanding or you lack understanding or you or, or, or that you didn't know where your sin just passed you know what to do even when you saw it was there you know what to do even you're not prepared even god prepared for his son to come now abba yeah, prophet have been speaking about the coming of Messiah. As I prophesied it, seven years to come. Even Simeon and Prophet Anna were praying to bring Jesus down. Say, so, so, I have seen the salvation of, of, your, of, your, of my soul. Father, let your son depart. He be, he's been praying. Prophet Simeon has been praying. Praying. Anna has been praying. He praying, waiting for the construction of Israel. For the salvation of Israel. Until he arrived. Simeon said, okay, I've seen it. I can't depart. Seasons. What they do? They were praying Christ into seasons, praying into the earth. Do, do God spoke His word. I said, for God so loved the world, He gave His Son to the world. Yes, we have heard that word. But Simon and I said, I know that God spoke it, but I must pray it down. They locked themselves up in fast and prayer. I must pray it down. They knew the times and seasons, and they prayed Jesus into the earth. At the point, look at see, look at see, Jesus Christ was, was delaying coming, was, was delaying, was delaying, was delaying. They prayed him into the earth. Ah, actually, Gabriel was forced to visit a, a, a virgin woman. The woman was just going by herself, oh, just going away after evening sacrifice. <laughs> after evening synagogue, <laughs> going away. Hey, beautiful angel, a beautiful uh, damsel, you know, that's for your favor. He said, What man of salvation is this? Because some people were praying and praying Jesus to the earth. Some were praying. Angel had no power. I thought I had no trouble to come down to, to, to a make Mary to begin to accept the will of God to bear the son. You know why I believe that? It was so... God, Mary was 15 years, 16 years, whatever. It, am I correct? Something like it was, it was very young. At that young age. Why would God wait till Mary becomes 30 at least? Or 40 years? Oh, at that age, it was in a hurry. Some people were praying, 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 praying at the seasons. Oh Lord, your people are suffering for suffering too much. Where will that be our cause? Where will, where will that day come in? Who shall see our salvation? Who shall see our consolation? Oh God, bring your son down. Praying, praying. They prayed at the season. They created a season for them and they brought Jesus down by force. Shala <laughs> Bragadosa. And our soldiers began to see the king of the Jews. They saw it in the seasons. Shepherds saw everything. <laughs> everything prepared. Jesus, God sent the cousin to prepare the coming of Jesus. He said, that's what you call preparing for your season. Even God himself knows how to prepare. Prepare John the Baptist to go and prepare the world, the world of the master. And then people have seen that they don't prepare. That's why when we are praying, when we are fasting and praying, we pray. Prepare ourselves. We get ready. We don't want to take these three days for granted. It won't be a routine. But every three day drive fast is a time, is a season to be assessed. So you pray. You assess it. You assess it. You pray. You fast. So do your Bible. You, oh God, I am here. Oh God, I am here. Let this one not be like any other. Oh God, I'm here. Last month was good. I loved it. But this month, let it be powerful. Let it be greater. Let it be greater. Let it be greater. Power. Every month you say, God, greater, greater, greater. Bible says, from glory to glory, from glory to glory. I saw your glory last year, la la last month. It was powerful, it was greater. But Father Maxim, from glory to glory, from glory to glory. As I've waited on you and fast every three days, every, every month, Lord, I assess greater glory. I assess greater glory. I assess greater glory. And my season shall be greater. It's not you just fast and pray things just come and go just like that no, no special prayer no special thing no special no special speaking no speaking right things talking anyhow that's when somebody that's why you think that when you're fasting some people come and anger you more you can say something bad ah if you should speak something bad do your season on we just are watching they're everywhere the bad ones are there good ones are there waiting to carry what you say <laughs> i'm not making sense they're, they're just watching Remember Jesus Christ, he said, ah, he said, if not because I'm destined to go and die, if I call my angels, ah, they will roast you, like, under a second you are dead. He said, for the sake of the kingdom, I won't call them. 
You know what I, I wonder what I think? I perceive that angels were waiting in heaven, waiting for the order. He cried and said, Angels! <laughs> That's what anytime I read that scripture, do you know her power to, to release you, to kill you? Oh! It's a marriage, it's a marriage place, I'll be laughing. I don't want to laugh when I see that place. I supposed to be feeling but I laugh. Because you're telling your God that I'm about to kill you. <laughs> I don't be laughing. I'm not both laughing. I said, oh my God. Like, no, this is when, when people don't understand, it's very bad. You are, you are seeing God in your presence, the deity. They said they want to kill the deity. Gods don't die. <laughs> Have I communicated? His mortal men that die. <laughs> and I let Jesus say, hey, dear, well, it's just one, not two, one. Come down. Pilate is finished. <laughs> In fact, the whole place is finished. Look at Samson. He had two pillars. Oh God, do this for me last time. Woo! Everybody died. He killed more people than when he was alive. Come on, come here. Talk more if an angel stepped down. One alone. One killed thousands. Am I coming at it? Friends, let us get to our 60 season. When the special season, and I perceive in my spirit man so strongly. That this season will be like no, 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 no other. It will be so powerful, so great, so mighty. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're going to come out of this season. Bless much more than ever. Carrying glories much more than ever. Carrying power more than ever before. Carrying anointing more than ever before. Having your prayers answered much more than ever before. In the name of Jesus, we serve the true living God who are the same yesterday, the same today, the same forevermore. If God has done it for many, it's your turn. The three days die fast is your turn. I say it's your turn. I say it's your turn. I say it's your turn. Shout it's my turn. It won't pass you by. It won't pass you by. You will not miss it. Oh. I say you will not miss it. Those of you on YouTube, Facebook, you won't miss this season. This is a season for you. Those of you here, it's a season for you. You will not miss this season. It won't pass you by. In the name of Jesus, receive your miracles. Receive signs and wonders. Receive the grace of God. Receive the power that anointing. That you are waiting for. This is your time. It is your time. It is your time. It is your time. Shout is my turn. Jump on your feet. It's time to pray. My time is fast spent. Wherever you want me to pray. Oh God, this is my time. This is my season. This is will not pass me by. This time will not pass me by. Lay back at all sakata. If, if last month passed me by, not this month. If last month just came and passed, okay, so not this month. I will see your glory. I will see your power. I will see your anointing. I will see your grace. My labra kata la bagade. My labra kata sakata. My labra kata. Hey, 